What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles back at you with another video. It is boa breeding season and it's upon us, so I wanted to talk about a controversial subject and that's something that comes up every year. That is albino to albino boa breeding. So when you're considering breeding your albino to albino, the short answer, as I mentioned, is yes, you can do that. And the reason why a lot of people say don't do that is because they can have al eye problems. So albinos like this girl here, this is a moon glow boa that I produced myself. I'll get off camera and I'll zoom into her eyes a little bit in a second, but she was born with one eye. She was actually born with two eyes, but one was what we'll call a bug eye. And that's the issue that people try to avoid with albino to albino breeding, is they can produce bug-eyed boas. So they say, don't breed albino to albino, make sure you breed albino to het or het to het, and that can clear that albino bug-eyed boa issue. At the same time, that's not true because I've done het to het and I've done albino to het. I've done a bunch of different combos, possible het to albinos, and it's just in the albino genetics, the albino makeup, it's specifically call albino. I can't speak to sharp albino because I haven't produced enough to do that, but it's just in their general makeup that they can produce eye problems in boas. So the advantages of breeding a het to albino, or let's start with the advantages of breeding. So the advantages of breeding an albino to an albino, obviously is you get all albinos in the litter. It's a recessive trait and you can breed all the albinos and you get all albino babies. The problem with that is it was initially developed from a very small gene pool of snakes. And what I feel causes the bug eyes is there was a genetic recessive trait or something like that in the albinos that shows through with all albino boas. Now, not every albino boa has this trait. For instance, this girl where she has one bug eye, I believe will produce more bug eyed babies. Whether I produce her with a het to het, with a visual to visual, with a, you know, I guess I couldn't do het to het, but whether I bred her with a het albino or whether I bred her with a visual, I believe she will still produce bug eyed babies. I think it's something in her makeup. Now, that at the same time, she may not produce the direct lineage of bug-eyed babies, but I do think because she has one eye and it's bug-eyed, or it was bug-eyed and at this point it's fallen out, I think that is where uh, that trait is in her lineage. It's just this recessive makeup. This is purely just based on my observations and I have no genetic testing or history to do this, but I'm gonna get off camera. I wanna show you what I'm talking about here for a second. So now you can see her head. She has one eye that's missing on this side and then if I can get her to turn, one eye that is perfect on the other. This clearly hasn't impacted her health. She's a beautiful animal, she's thriving, she's about, I think she's a 2017, uh, I'd have to look at her tag, but she's one of my favorite snakes I have because she's unique and she is really just my pet. I don't plan on breeding her because when I produce babies, I wanna make sure they're strong lineage and there's no potential issues that I'm gonna be passing on to my customers who may have them as pets or may have them as breeders. When I produce boas with eye problems, I'll typically sell them to good homes at a pet price for pet purposes only. So a boa that might be selling for $1,000, I might sell for $200 or $300 as a pet only. Uh, once they're eating and once they're kind of healthy and established, I know they're gonna do well. And if you're one of those customers out there who have one of those boas, thank you because I get updates from you often and it's really cool seeing them progress. But they make great pet snakes, pet animals, but not typically good breeders. Again, for that reason though, I do not wanna pass on that genetic makeup to somebody else. So the short answer again is yes, you can. Now the advantages of doing a het to a visual is that that het may have a stronger genetic background. There's a less likely chance that that het has that eye problem in their DNA that started way back when albino boas were initially getting started. So I think it is one of those lineage issues that it was a problem in some of the initial albino boas and basically every boa after that may or may not have that trait, just like every other recessive trait in humans. Again, this is purely my 
my experience, I've done albino to albino, and consistently those boas have never produced bug eyes. And then I've also done albino to albino or het to albino, and consistently those boas produce bug eyes, which makes me believe that it is associated with some type of a genetic marker, genetic makeup, and not so much an incubation issue like some people would say. Uh, that is the only proof or the only evidence that's behind my assumption. So. That is the purpose of breeding het to het or het to visual is there's a less likely chance that you will breed out that eye makeup problem. However, if you have animals that produce perfect babies every time, you'll likely never have that issue. And that is also why I don't believe this problem is apparent in sharp albinos. Because in sharp albinos, I don't believe this was ever really bred into it. However, there's a possibility that somewhere along the line, somebody messed up something, bred a call to a sharp, didn't know, those babies got somewhere, and there's babies out there that are actually het for call and het for sharp, which sounds like a great thing until you breed them together and you don't know whether your albinos are call or sharp. That's a whole different subject. This was just focused on, can you breed your albino to albino? And yes, I say go for it as long as you know your animals. I decided to change up the animal a little bit here. This is a uh, junglo, so a jungle sun glow call albino. The camera is not even close to picking up how much pink is on this girl. She is just dripping in this pink color. Maybe it is and I just can't see it in the viewfinder, but right now this girl is amazing. She's actually the same age and I believe a litter mate to this girl, to the one that I just showed. So really pretty snakes. Uh, this one clearly does not have the, the eye issue. I'll see if I can show off her head, but uh, really pretty beautiful snake. And one thing I will say is that even though this is a litter mate, she may not have the eye issues. So that's something important to consider is just don't dismiss those babies, but you also have to keep them and hold them back with caution, breed them with caution, and understand what you're doing. The end game isn't always just to make a buck. The end game is to produce healthy, high quality animals. That should be everybody's end game. So if it's not yours, then you need to reassess what you're doing. Go breed ball pythons like everybody else that's in the I need to make a quick buck market. So with that said, guys, I appreciate it. I didn't mean to offend the ball python folks. Uh, hopefully you can take that as a joke and not a, not a, uh, a criticism towards you guys or a dig. But uh, if you haven't checked out my website, make sure to check it out. I got some really cool bows on there always going up. I also have some cool colubrids that are going to be going up soon, at least as of the date of this video. I'm expanding into some different species because I just am having fun with it. But uh, make sure you check out my Patreon as well. If you're not subscribed to that, take a look. It supports this channel. It keeps me motivated to do these videos every week because this is my free time and by having some type of a support from you guys, it helps kind of say, all right, this is more than my free time. This is also a job and it's being supported by folks like you. So I really appreciate my Patreon. Shout out to you guys. Thank you for continuing to support. And it's also a really cool community where we can chat and join, just kind of talk about whatever you want, breeding, keeping, uh, any type of species, buying snakes, who's good to buy from, who's not, all this other stuff. It's kind of this little internal community that has been growing since I started it about six months ago from today. But uh, again, with all that said, guys, I appreciate you watching. Thank you. Subscribe, share, like this channel, and we'll talk next week. Thanks, guys.